So when you say son, do you mean like, in what, no, what is the relation? Uh, so we're talking about two spirits, God the Father. If he by definition is a father, that means he has a son by definition. No, but when you say father, what do you actually imply? I mean... Because we are not talking about father, son, about, biological relationship, yeah, yeah, no, are we? I'm speaking about eternal generation. I'm saying there's only one... Model. But you don't believe that, do no, you? No, I don't. But I'm saying there's only one model of eternal generation that works. And it's if you say, yeah. if the father by definition, God is a by spirit, is a father by definition, that means he needs to have a son to be a father by definition. Therefore, if the son does not exist, the father cannot exist by definition. And for the son to be a son by definition, this is what I'm saying, this is philosophy now, we're not speaking about scripture. For the, son to, for the son to be a son by definition, he needs to have, have a father. So that means the father cannot exist by definition without the son, and the son cannot exist without definition without the But father. why would you use the term father and son in the first place? This is the point I'm trying to illustrate. And, but what I'm saying is... The why, would you, why can't you just use the term God? Yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying is the eternal, de the eternal generation model does not work. It does not make it is, yeah. it is It is problematic to the Trinitarian view. You, you were arguing for it exactly. the last no, time no, no, we spoke. No, no, no. It's okay because what happened... It's a good was, thing you changed your yeah, mind no, now. No, this is what, you know what it just shows how incoherent it is. Yeah, but this is what I'm trying to say. It's like, I have become better at explaining what I believe after having all these discussions. Because You're coming close to Islam, You've you asked me a lot of questions yeah, and it's made me realize, okay, what I was saying didn't make sense. Okay. The Trinity makes sense to me, but the, the, the idea that Jesus Christ can be eternal, yet generated at the same time, Josh, jo you know Josh, the PhD, yeah. he's preached, it doesn't make any sense. Well, Josh goes mostly into philosophy, as yeah. you know. And, but you see, that's but the he's, point. he's coming from a Catholic background, unlike yeah. you. So yeah, your, maybe your view might be different. But as far as I know, the Eastern Orthodox and the Catholics, they believe in this eternal generation model. So that's... For me, when you really, t again, when you take it to its logical yeah. conclusion, Jesus Christ, whether you like or not, ends up becoming some sort of creative right. God. So why do you actually believe that God needs to be tripersonal? Why not unipersonal? What's wrong with the, okay, so, the, yeah. the concept that Moses and Abraham and all the prophets, including Jesus Christ, I, I feel like I don't want to in. dive into the Trinity today because I feel like we talked about it before. Okay. You want to talk but, about the Incarnation then? Yeah, we can. We can. I also, I also want to talk about Muhammad being a prophet. I want, I want, yeah, I want, sure. I want, I want to Have you done some about, research? Um, yeah. I had, I've had uh, quite a few conversations with some Muslims and they okay. give me their reasons, but I want to kind of kind of look at your perspective on that so we yeah, can start sure. there and then we can actually talk about Trinity a little bit, that'll be good eventually. About incarnation, incarnation. because we spoke about the Trinity last yeah. time. But yeah, why do I believe God is tripersonal? Because I believe God has revealed himself to us in the, um, I'm going to say the person of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's how, he's, that's how he's made himself known to us. We, we, you got anything from the scripture to back that up? Um, like, did God at any time say he manifests as tripersonal or as a trinity example, or as three persons? Put it this way, how God is identified in the Bible yeah. is the Lord, the, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of God, this is not an angel, this is actually a spirit, spirit, and the Word. That's kind of how God is identified. Mm -hmm. But isn't God spirit anyway? Yeah, exactly. So what's yeah. the difference between but you see, this God is, as spirit and the Holy Spirit? See, this is the problem. Oh, okay, sorry. When I, Okay, when I use the word Holy Spirit, yeah. the correct term is the breath of the Lord, the Ruach, the breath that comes forth from within himself. Yeah. By That's the way, it. the Jewish people don't worship the Ruach, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, they just breathe so let's yeah. not get uh, too, yeah, they just breathe what do you say? <laughs> let's, let's not get, because what you're doing now is like, it's kind of uh, anachronistic to believe that that Ruach that is spoken about in the yeah, Old yeah. Testament is the Holy Spirit which you worship and believe as being one of the persons of the Trinity. Because that's exactly not, yeah, they, they, sorry, they that's definitely they, not they, how they, the they wouldn't, they wouldn't Jewish people... They wouldn't interpret it that way. But I think at the same time, it's like, um, I think that there needs to be definitely a level of um, un unity in, when it comes down to orthodoxy. And I, I, when I read the scriptures, I, 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 that's how I see it. I, I, I mean, see. what I want to know is like, if you look, from, if you look from the perspective of, say, the prophets, the, like Abraham and yep. Moses and Jacob exactly. and all these prophets yep. who, who came before, Yes? Did they at any point during their lifetime tell anyone or themselves believe or worship a triune God? No, they never said those words, no, no, no. Not even, I mean even conceptually. No. Like, no, no, forget no, no. the they, words, they said, they the word the, trinity, the, the forget the word triune. The Lord is one. The Lord is one. That yeah, exactly. Good. So I'm asking if, if, if all those people could be saved using this uh, monotheistic, the pure monotheistic uh, yeah. belief in God, where, it's, where God is indivisible yeah. and immutable. I believe I also believe God is indivisible as well. Well, when you say God is indivisible, you should actually believe in a monad? I, no, I'm saying he has one spirit, <laughs> and that one spirit, there's three consciousnesses. So that's not, that's not indivisible. The spirit's not divided, there's just three consciousnesses that exist. In yeah, but what do you mean three consciousnesses? Are you saying God has three minds? 
I'm saying that for the son to be a person, he's distinct from the father, meaning that the son's mind or kind of personality is, is, is unique to his own. Yeah. And the father's personality is unique to his own, and the Holy Spirit's personality is unique to his own. Just three that, minds, that, right? Yeah, exactly. So that, that means they all have a mind, right. but that mind, by definition, is unified by choice in love. So are they independent individually or not? So now this is where we start <laughs> moving into the... the, the, the this, uh, is, this is the crux no, of the no, matter, no, bro. No, this, and this is what you know, I say that one word and then we immediately jump into... No, no, but we have to because, look, yeah, course, if course, you talk about the term independent, <laughs> it means you are not dependent on anyone or anything that is what independent they means share one spirit you can't say they're independent in the sense that they they're like separated but however no but you said they're distinct in person in in in, in mind in thinking no no in person they're distinct in that, in that yeah. the father can love the son and the son can love the father and the holy spirit can love each other they can choose to love each other and they do and that's why that's can you show me where the holy spirit was loved by the father or the son I'll, you see, this is yeah. an assumption you guys are making. Why? I'll, I'll, Why I'll, do you make I'll, that assumption when the, nothing the like that is in the Bible? The Holy Spirit is called the, the Spirit of Charity, the Spirit of Love. That's Regardless, where does the Father love the Holy Spirit? Like, like yeah. the Father says, this is my yeah. beloved Son. Yeah. Yes, during the... Say, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So why do you assume that the Holy Spirit is loved when there is no such thing? The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Love, so in, by, by, in Corinthians. So it's, yeah, but if you call the Spirit of Love or Spirit of Mercy, or whatever no, it no, is. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. It's called the Spirit of Love. Ah, proceeds. <laughs> shall, I, shall, I, shall I hold you on to that term? Proceed doesn't mean generate. So what does it mean? It just means um, flow forth from. It means you're still dependent on someone, right? Proceed from. Because you have to predicate that to somebody. Yeah, of course. You can't just yeah, yeah, proceed yeah. out of thin air. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only one who doesn't proceed is we're the not, Father. Come back, come back. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who uses terms, but you, you, We're not you know, you, you, uh, I don't know if you realize, Samson, the irony is that you use these terms because it's been drilled into you from the church, but you have come to the realization it, it's not, it's something which is incoherent, it doesn't make sense, and you, you are stuck with those words because you don't know what else to use. The scripture says that the Holy Spirit proceeds from <laughs> But it also comes from the Son, do you know why? Because in John 20, verse 24... Okay, Jesus so it's dependent on both then. Hold on. Jesus Christ says, yeah. He appears after His resurrection and says to the, to the disciples, He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, just as the Lord breathed within Adam and said, And the yeah. Holy Spirit came forth from the beginning. Which is Pro quite beautiful. Yeah, so, but, like but what does that mean? That means the Holy Spirit is dependent yeah, on it, being proceeded. He from proceeds both, from someone. Yeah, from both the Father and the Son. So He's dependent on both of them. Okay. But what is the meaning? Then the whole term, independent, goes out the window. The whole purpose of they're, being they're not, independent no, means they, you're... They all depend on each other for love anyway. So there is no, no, I don't think the Father depends on anyone to proceed, no, or to generate, no, no. or to beget. There is, there is no generation. <laughs> <laughs> there is no generation. Well, it's, it's just semantics, you know. You can use there the term no generate, generation. you can use the term proceed, no. you can use the term... Proceed just means flow. It doesn't mean bring up, you know, it just means... Yeah, you still... There's still a not, source, right? There's still not, a source. For that flow, you still need a source. There's an origin of that. You have to. You have to. The origin is the Father. So that's what I'm saying. The whole meaning of independent really doesn't apply to the Trinity <laughs> if they all are depend interdependent to each other. <laughs> no, this is not role. This is the nature. The other thing which I kind of disagree with is like, uh, do you know that the post-incarnation, yeah. when the Son took on the flesh, yeah. do you think the flesh is now part of the Godhead? So... The human nature, let's say the human nature. Yeah, I wouldn't so, like to okay, use the so, term flesh because yeah, yeah. later on Jesus did take on a, yeah, like what do you say? Yeah, a glorified exactly. body. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So let's use the term human nature. Yeah, that, yeah, the is the human nature, nature within Jesus or outside Jesus as a person? Is it outside it's, it's, his person or inside no, his person? It's, 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 within, it's with him. It's, it's united okay. with him. And the person of the, which is the second person of the Trinity, so he's inside the second person of the Trinity, both the uh, human nature and the divine nature. Yeah, so that's technically there's a human nature that's. Um, united itself with a member of the Trinity Technical. Okay, so and, and does that then, in uh, obviously that would then imply that, that human nature is now part of the Godhead? It's part of the Godhead in the sense it's united to it, but it's not mixed with the Godhead, meaning that the nature of something created cannot mix. Yeah, inherently. just like it, within yeah. within the person of Jesus, the yeah. two natures don't mix. Yeah, exactly, but, but, but it's still, it's still, yeah, it's still yeah, it's inside the, of, the yeah, person it's of... Part, yeah, it's, it's, connected, yeah. it's connected to the Godhead in a sense, yeah, so it's, it's part of it. Yeah, you, 
you can't. You, there's no. There's, you cannot say that the human nature is not. It's, it is. It is okay. Yeah. So now you're saying that the Godhead is not just divine. It has a human nature as well. Attached to it. Well, attached. You yeah, said yeah. it's part of it. No, no, no. It, it, no. It, it, it is, cannot. It, it is still divine, 100. percent But it has a, one of the persons wearing a human body. So technically. Yeah. So a created because the human nature yeah, is created, exactly. right? So, there's so a created, created nature thing. is now part of the Godhead. Because you cannot use the yeah, person, yeah, 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 you cannot yeah, put yes. the second person so of the Trinity Godhead. outside. So, oh, right, yeah, so I'm using right, the Godhead. Because right. we're not saying essence, we're saying... Yeah, yes, so yes. within the Godhead, you yes. have a created nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes? Yeah. So you got uh, now... So don't you think that the... <laughs> don't you think the Godhead was more perfect before the Incarnation? When yeah. it did not have any human nature or created nature? So it's become from being perfect to becoming kind of imperfect because I, don't, I wouldn't call human nature perfect. Human nature, I, I, compared I, I, to the I, divine I, I, nature, is always going to be yeah, perfect. Yeah, you see what I mean? I think. I think. So I think, I think pre-incarnation, Godhead was more perfect than post-incarnation. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You, that's one way you could look at it. So I'm going to. How How would you look I'm at it? I'm, I'm, well, well, I'm going to acknowledge that. Yeah. Is this right? No, no, it's not. No, it's not recording yet. They're recording. What's wrong? With They're recording now. <laughs> oh, been, the okay. camera's been in front okay, of you cool, like cool, yeah, since cool. we started. Yeah. Um, Why are you so surprised? I didn't know, sorry, I thought, okay. I thought it was going to start. You're in, you're in yeah. speaker's corner, welcome. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, yeah so, so there is a human nature, a yeah. glorified spiritual body that is connected technically to the Godhead. Yes. Yeah. However... But when you, say, when you say connected, it's not external to the Godhead, it's, it's within the yeah, Godhead. Yeah, it's within the Godhead, meaning that um, the, sun, the, the, the sun is wearing that body. However, what we established before is um, the nature of the Godhead is, is different to the actual body. So that, that's, that's the differentiation factor. Sorry, the nature? The nature. The actual, because one is created, one is uncreated. Yeah. So the actual essential nature of the Godhead yeah. is not that body. By the way, do you know that essence body. means all the nature, not just, just part of the na nature? When I say your essence, yeah. the essence of Samson, is the fullness of, me. Is the fullness of you. Yeah, exactly. Yes? So when I say the essence of the Godhead, the essence of the Godhead includes both natures now. Okay, okay. Yeah, are I'm, are I'm, you with me? I'm going to say okay. I'm going to say okay. No, no, don't say okay. I no, want no, you to no, think no, about no, it no, 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 before I, you yeah, say okay. Yes, yes. Um, but if, if we're using that definition, what you said there. But um, essence has to yeah, be that. Yeah, yeah, you say, cannot say, take, okay. because most Christians that I speak to, what they do is they somehow say, they somehow mean that essence is only the divine nature of, yeah. of the Godhead. Yeah. Essence includes it's all the, fullness, the nature. Yeah. It's the fullness. It but has so, to be the so fullness. So by the definition, yes, I would have to say yes. Yeah. And now, now it comes down to... So it's imperfection now. now. It comes, you see, that's an opinion now. You're, you're giving your, no, no, wait, it's not. Hold on, you're giving your, but you, you're giving do you not realize that pre-incarnation there was no human nature in the essence of, of the Godhead, of but post-incarnation now you have a created nature, yeah. the human nature, yeah. as part of the Godhead. The so which includes, God. which includes the imperfection that comes with the human nature. No, no, but here's the difference though. What's the difference? This, this body that Jesus Christ now has... I'm not talking about Jesus' body only now. I'm talking about yeah, the no, Godhead. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the glorified spiritual body he has. Is, is, it's still created. It's still created, yes. Exactly. So, because it's human nature. Yeah, yeah, it's still created, but it's been perfected to the level that is possible for a human. But it's still then why you call it human? You shouldn't call it human uh, anymore. It has a human, it has a human form. Exactly, so you shouldn't call it. If it's perfected to the extent of being divine, yeah, then, it's, then it shouldn't be because called human nature Jesus anymore. Jesus Christ's body is immortal. He's never going to die. Just like your body. No, 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 wait, my, wait. My when you body. get a... No, no. When you resurrect... Exactly. When you resurrect... I'm going to get a spiritual body. Exactly. exactly. And that's going to be immortal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, don't, don't think Jesus is immortal. Yes. Jesus actually died. The person died. You cannot say the person and did not and even die. In, and even in the book of Revelation it says, yeah. I am he, obviously he appeared in glory. And John was like a dead man, but he said, I'm he who died and has risen. And, alive and has risen, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to yeah. die forevermore. So he's saying, I, this body I was wearing died, yes. And I am going to live forever now yeah. in, this, in this body. Absolutely, yeah. But yeah, let's talk. Let's, I, I didn't know it was filming, which is fine. But yeah. let's talk about, um, we, can, we can go back to the incarnation, which is obviously a good Yeah, point. sure, sure. And you want um, to ask something about Prophet yeah, so Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No problem. Uh, about um, Muhammad specifically. Yeah. So, uh, last time we spoke a little while ago, we were talking about kind of the Trinity and you know whether God can manifest and appear, yeah. which is an interesting conversation. And um, so, I want to talk a little bit about Muhammad today. Yeah, sure. Uh, a bit about maybe even the. Maybe Have you read anything about Prophet Muhammad and so if so, I, from I, where? I was reading a bit about kind of the, his um, biography. His, his, um, his, his, some of his visions, so like the vision where his initial vision in the cave. That wasn't a vision. So, not vision. I mean, <laughs> no, so, I mean, it was a real. Yeah, this, this is what I mean. it, it was reality. When he he met, saw an angel. When he met the angel in yes. the cave, when he was meditating and praying. Yeah. And um, 
in the in, I was I was reading the Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari. Yeah. Sorry, Sahih yeah, Bukhari yeah, um, yeah. narration of Aisha talking about the experience. Yeah. And I'm saying. But I, it was Khadija yeah, who was yeah. the wife of I'm the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Narrating it was, was Aisha. Oh yeah, the Bukhari. one who narrated. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, what carry I'm saying on. is, why yeah. do you believe that that story is number one reliable, and number two? Why do you regard Muhammad to be an actual prophet yeah. who came in the name of the God of the Old Testament, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Okay. Why, why do you, why do you so, believe? so, for the first question, first why is, yeah. why do why is that experience something that we believe is reliable? Yeah, you on. know, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi himself did not believe what happened to him, what happened, or what he saw. He was he was shocked himself. Yeah. Yes, and he ran to his uh, his his wife Khadija radiallahu anha. And he, he, he was in a state of shock and surprise as to what happened to him. And she didn't know either. So then they went to uh, the cousin of Khatija Radilana, who was actually a Christian. Apparently he was blind or something. Say people, again? He was? People said he was blind or uh, no, Maybe, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, regardless, he was actually a scholar of the Torah, who is to translate the Torah into uh, the Arabic language. So he was someone who was known as a as a scholar during his time. So because they did not understand, they went to uh, this scholar and he was the one who informed him that this, um, this uh, uh, individual or this entity that you saw was actually the same angel who came to previous prophets. Yeah. So, so he... You mentioned Moses as well. Yeah. So all the prophets, when they got the message from, uh, from, from God, they would receive it through an angel. And the angel would come in the form of a man or whatever form. Uh, God saw uh, fitting at that time, they came in that form and this is how, because he was a scholar of the Torah, he knew that in the Torah similar stories of other previous prophets were there and because he relates it from a different religion, you know, he's, he's actually a Christian and he relates it from a different religion and he said that if I lived long enough I would follow you but he also said, he also warned uh, Prophet Muhammad and Khadija Radilan that this is something that uh, is going to be danger to you that people would want to harm you and people would want to kill you and all that because yeah. that, uh, the previous prophets also faced these threats yeah, exactly. you see what I mean so that is one uh, one of the earliest uh, revelation or oh, sorry the first revelation which came to Prophet Muhammad yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the way you know the Quran came over a period of 23 years yeah, exactly. so even though that was the first revelation there were many other revelations which came yeah. Uh, through the angel, the throughout his life, the over a period of 23 years. Yeah, so that was like the quote, yeah. the sight and the name of the world that created the man from yeah. the of God. Like so, because it's happened uh, to the previous prophet, so we don't think it's something unique to Prophet Muhammad yeah. So, if, if you can believe it for the other prophets, why is it such a big problem if we believe it for our prophet? I would say if you use that rationalization, yeah. that, 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 may, that may seem to be the case, but I just... I, um, I don't even have an issue with the idea that Muhammad had a spiritual experience. Yeah. And I would also say, when it comes down to, for example, um, Aisha believing that this happened. Yeah. So Aisha was a narrator. She did not witness any of this, obviously. Yes, so she was, she, she, she was one of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu and she was narrating because she had memorized uh, many of the hadiths, yeah? So I think after Abu, Abu Huraira, he was the one who narrated the most hadith from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aisha is the, uh, the, uh, sorry, the wife and companion who would narrate the most from female, from any female, from any woman. In yeah. fact, from many of the companions as well. She, she was like one of the top narrators. Yeah. So yeah, the, the second question in the name of the, of the God of Abraham and Moses and so on. Yes, we believe it is Prophet Muhammad, the, the God that the, he preached is the one true God who Abraham believed in, who Moses believed in, who Jacob believed in, who all the other prophets believed in, be they from Israel or outside Israel. They all believed in one true God. And as we discussed earlier, none of them actually claimed to believe uh, a multi-personal God, yes. So again, I think if you're looking for the name itself, so the name is something that, uh, for example, Jesus in Aramaic would call God Allah. Do you know the term for God in, in Aramaic? Yeah, yeah, it's so, Allah. So, it's, it's almost identical to the Arabic Allah. So what I would say when it comes down to the name, and, here, and here's where I would yeah. um, say it's very important. I think with the, the name Yahweh. That's, that's a pronunciation. Okay. Is the no one knows the pronunciation of Yahweh. Because exactly. <laughs> so, there's only consonants and so, without vowels. So, 
and that's why the Jewish people don't pronounce it here. Yeah. What I'm trying to illustrate is number one, yes. the name of the God of Israel, yeah. or the Elohim of Israel, who appeared to um, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that name that was revealed to uh, Moses at the burning bush. And the, we have the characters, which is Yud Hey Vav Hey. And in the Old Testament scripture, mm -hmm. both the Masoretic text, the Septuagint, and even it, it mentions that name over 7,000 times. So. Yeah. Okay. Not only do we have um, biblical sources, we have non biblical sources, which is there's this kind of called, it's called the Monad Stele, which is this kind of rock, this kind of a rock that has um, a Syrian writing on it. Yeah. And even on that rock that came from the kind of 500 BC. It tells the story of one of the kings insulting the God of Israel, saying, we stole 